welcome and uh, I am very happy that Karen is again here with us and I will tell you what we will not talk about today. <laughs> we will not talk about parents' prayer for children. We will not talk about what the prayer should look like or what to pray about. We will just concentrate on children and the prayer because many times uh, we see situation when children are misbehaving or they have tantrums and first advice from older people is you should pray with him or with her and when you start to pray with a child during this hard moment probably they will hate even you and the prayer of course so how to pray Karen mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. That's definitely not a good moment because when we pray in those moments, when children are struggling with their emotions, it can just make more pressure. It can make it can be spiritually abusive, actually, mm -hmm. to try and pray in those moments. Um, and it, we first need to comfort them and lower their stress and be compassionate. And then they can um, then we can pray with them. Mm -hmm. But when the child is completely distressed, I would just pray in my own head, please, God, help me know what to do here. <laughs> please, may they calm down soon. Please give me wisdom. And I would just pray that in my own head in those moments. I've done that many times. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so children, praying with children, I think it needs to be as positive as possible, like talking to a friend. They need to know they can talk to God like any time. He's right there. They can use any words they like because he understands them all. And he understands even when they don't have words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he understands all about us. And he knows the things he would put into words if only we could. And when we can't, you know, he deals with that. And so he's he's in constant awareness of us, constant communication with us. And the easier we can make it for children to pray, like they're talking to their daddy, their mommy, a friend, then the better it is. It becomes more natural. I saw a really beautiful picture of a, a letter to God or a prayer to God where there was a paper and on the top of the paper was written, Dear God, then there was um, a sign of uh, drops of the tears and then thank you, your Joanna, for example. And it was so beautiful because sometimes we just really just want to cry and don't say even one word or we don't know what to say and this is so important that children have to know that this is like really conversation that you can just come and be close and just cry because this is also part of conversation and can you have help us can you give us maybe any advice how to help children understand that this is conversation with god yes i think one thing that we can do is to start, even when they're very young, is have our own conversations with God in their presence aloud. I think often as parents, we pray quietly in our head when our children are small. And the sooner that we start just having these like sentence prayers to God in our everyday life, please God, I'm just praying now an ambulance is passing, someone is hurt, please take care of the people in the, in the ambulance, please give the doctors wisdom. And, and just with your eyes open as you're moving around, uh, Please, God, we are, we've lost the keys. We don't know where to find them. Please, can you help us remember where we left them or where they are? Um, and those sorts of just sentence prayers, just naturally like you're speaking to somebody. Um, and make your language natural, everyday language. I hear some children being taught to use like these and thous and in English, like archaic language, mm -hmm. as if that's somehow holier. And no, no, it's not. They wrote the prayers as they would say them in their time. We say the prayers as we say them in our time. I mean, Jesus taught us to pray really simply, you know, the Lord's Prayer. It's short, it's to the point, it's real. Um, it, it, you know, fits for every day. <laughs> um, and that can, and he starts off saying, um, dear father, dear daddy. And uh, sometimes I teach the Lord's Prayer with actions and kids love this. So I taught it because when I was first taught the Lord's Prayer, it was done in a very boring way. And it was mm -hmm. like, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, my kingdom. Like, no meaning, nothing. And every time anyone said, let's pray the Lord's Prayer, I was like, oh, no, it's going to be so boring. 
And when my children were young, we made up some actions to it. And we decided that the very first action when you pray to God is that you give yourself a big hug, our father, our daddy, mm-hmm. and give a big hug from God. And I tell them, you know, all the time God is with you and he's longing for you to talk to him. And he's there and, and he's listening all the time. He knows your thoughts. In some way, you're in conversation with him already. When we pause to pray and turn to him, he just wants to give us a big hug and say, oh, I'm really glad to spend time with you. I'm glad you want to come and talk. Let's have a big hug first. And and that's a nice way to start prayer is to have a big hug first. Um, and I used to physically hug my children too. Let's pray. And, and you know, in my arms, hugged up. We're talking to God and he loves us. And, you know, my arms show you how much he loves you. So that there is this, this loving connection. Okay, then after being hugged, they will say, dear God, so dear God, with being hugged, thank you for new Lego. And I'm asking you for another uh, another piece because I would like to have a, a skyrocket. Amen. <laughs> yes, but uh, that's very normal prayers. And I think that's okay. Let them do that. That's what you'd say to your daddy. Daddy, I really like some new Lego. Like, it's nothing wrong with praying a prayer like that for a child. You okay, say, till which age? <laughs> okay, when they're young. <laughs> when they're quite young. And I remember that um, my my middle son, when he was about two or three, whenever we prayed any prayer, he said, thank you, God, for my food. Amen. Mm-hmm. Going in the car, whether it was bedtime, whether it was mealtime, whatever, worship his prayer would always be thank you god for food and then one day someone gave him a train toy you know thomas the tank engine yeah yeah yeah. yeah. and he went to bed and he was holding this train like other children would have a teddy bear but he had a train and he said thank you god for thomas the tank engine and i'm like oh wow you know he's expanded his repertoire and then when we came to have breakfast it was thank you god for thomas the tank engine every prayer then was thank you god for thomas the tank engine (laughs) When they're little, that is okay. So you That's... didn't stop him. You didn't say, oh, you should say sorry for my sins or, I don't know, something. We had other prayers too, but whenever we asked him to pray, that's what he would pray. We left it at that. Mm-hmm. And because we didn't want him to feel that what he said to God was somehow wrong. Um, and But when we had family worship, we would do some other things to help. So we had a little bag when they were young. And it had different objects in it. So there might be um, a white heart. And Mm -hmm. that would say, thank you. uh, Please, God, forgive me for things I have done wrong today and name them. And thank you for giving me a white heart in exchange. Thank you for making me all clean again. Um, There would be like a car, you know, keep daddy safe on the road, a picture of our family, you know, praying for people in our family different things in there they would put that each child would put their hand in the bag and pull out something and they would say something about that Mm -hmm. reason is because children often need to see something or have something to touch and hold that helps them to stay focused on their prayer to to make the connection this is a real thing um and they struggle to know what to pray to god um you know someone they've never seen and encountered yeah have a talk conversation with them so we had we used different sorts of like prayers from my my book actually 100 creative prayer ideas for kids which you can't see because i've got my blurry on um but i wrote a lot of creative prayers there because i realized my children were multi-sensory kinetic children visual children and to see something to hold something to do something um was help them to pray and that's because children interact in the world in that way they play um and that's how they learn that's how mm-hmm. they that's how they do all sorts of things and so it's really okay for them to have some objects some things that help them to pray and we would use um like bubbles to talk about forgiveness we're gonna hold the bubbles think about what you've done wrong and you want to ask god to forgive you for um and then blow your bubbles and pray for forgiveness for what you've done wrong and when you open your eyes the bubbles have all gone they've completely disappeared and that's what god does with your sins like they're gone you can't find them and put them back in the pot they're gone so does it mean that we should just 
put into this little head as much ideas of a prayer that we can and in one day they will just um know or understand or because for example i am i am thinking when is there any moment when parents should step in and say no this is not the way you should pray or just tell something else or just step in um i think in my in my way like doing these things was my way of, of stepping in i didn't say no i didn't say you can't pray about that we can talk to god about anything even when we're using words that you know children might be using words that you think well i wouldn't use those words or i wouldn't pray about that i just let it be i don't want anything to interfere with their conversation with god mm -hmm. wrong. um I wanted them to feel they can talk to him about anything and in any way. God understands their heart. Um, so what I can do is I can model a simple prayers so they learn from me, positive modeling. Um, I can give them things that help them focus their prayers on different things that can be important to them. Um, we can talk a little bit about prayer in simple ways in our worships, particularly when they're young. Um, so today we're going to thank God for like everything he made on day one of creation, like light. Let's go and find all the lights in our house and thank God for them and look at what they do. You mm -hmm. know? Um, and then the next day, you know, go through, go through those things and have a theme. And today we're going to talk about thankfulness. Today we're going to go, wow. Um, and we're going to have some wow moments because this is how we worship God. This is how we like, he's amazing. And so by doing that, it would, would help them to learn different ways to pray different things that we can pray about um as they get older i think it can be helpful not just to have the, the physical things like the practical prayers which i think are re really really help children actually a mm -hmm. lot of children to um to understand what to pray about and to relate to god um there's some chat starters and these are on a website um uh Parenting for Faith mm -hmm. website and they have these chat starters and they have like a hundred chat starters and they're little printed out and you can make your own or just write them on cards and they're really lovely because they say tell God what made you happy today mm -hmm. tell God what you're afraid of today tell God what made you go wow today and ask him what he loves most about his creation so it wasn't just saying I'm going to tell you this it was also say in your prayers say god i wonder what what you like the most about what you made mm -hmm. which animal you think is the funniest you know i wonder what you were thinking when you made duck bill platypuses or whatever um and and just to pause and wonder about that together i wonder what god would say you know what do you think he might say and so these little chat starters help children to pray in like everyday normal ways about their everyday stuff and to invite God into that conversation. So they learn mm -hmm. to listen. And that's something as they get older, helping them to, to listen is important. And how do we do that? How do we model how we listen to God, how we feel God speaks to us? And you can say, you know, sometimes I, I pray and I, I'm looking for an answer and I, I suddenly realize to go out and look at a Bible verse. I feel like the Holy Spirit is telling me that. Or the Holy Spirit will tell me if in my head I can hear try doing this and so I try that and I can see the effect and, and maybe it's not the right what message maybe there's something else but I start and I do it and I just see and I keep listening so that idea that we model the talking and we model the listening is helpful to our children I don't think we do that very often we often just pray long prayers and they just switch off and so i think keep, me keep lots, of, lots of yeah me too yeah lots of short little prayers um can be helpful particularly in the moment about what's happening now is what children what's relevant to children what's relevant to us as well mm -hmm. or then have these like um arrow prayers we often call them that you just just a sentence about whatever's happening and bringing god into it so yeah. those little prayers in the moment are the can we call it like the most effective method of teaching children to pray i don't know what the most effective method is i think uh, because every child is different so different things teach different children 
Um, but I would say start by having your own very short sentence prayers aloud with your children. Mm-hmm. So they so they hear you pray in a simple way that they can understand. And it's short and simple. It's relevant to what's happening around them right now. And you can just say, wow, God, that tree is amazing. I love to look at the blossoms. Thank you. You know, mm-hmm. as you're walking down the road. Well, let's say thank you to God for, for this, this kitten. He's so gorgeous and we're stroking him and this is lovely. So, um, you know, there's lots of things we can thank God for. And that helps children to see that God is aware of everything all the time. He's right there. He's around them. He loves them. He's paying attention to them. And those things are really important. God is with you. He loves you. He's paying attention. He is hearing. Um, and we can talk to him anytime. Um they're the basic messages. And also when we teach children the Bible, the, the godly truth connected with nature, this is something that will always stay in their mind. So always when they will walk, they will remember those words, mommy's words, and they will connect immediately with with God, with with their brains. So it's really important. It is, and we're realizing more important, more and more the importance of paying attention to details of wonder in our world and helping children to do that. I was just reading this week that um, it was it's one of the best ways to stay resilient in tough times is to notice the beauty in the world, the creation, and just be filled with gratitude because when we do that, it actually lowers our anxiety. We feel loved and blessed. And we can find beautiful moments wherever we are. And that's what Paul did, I think, in Philippians 4, in prison. He was thinking about what was lovely, pure, true, etc. Find And thinking about wonderful things wherever he was. But it is so hard when we have an instant um, world right now. Everything is so quick and r- rush and yeah, stopping and thinking for a moment at least that this is something that God gave us and he made it just so to make us happy it's really important I think it is I think it is and my mom did that when I was a child and I realized that um I was so she brought me up being aware of things in nature it's amazing because she was a craft teacher and also a natural science teacher. So oh. I really thank God for what she taught me as a child to be about being creative and also about the natural world and filling me with wonder for it and always stopping and showing me something new and beautiful and amazing. And it was it's really funny because I remember this week that my my aunt told me that she was pushing me in a buggy when I was a really small child, like maybe one to two. And she said, oh, look at those lovely, lo- lovely yellow flowers over there. And I said, yes, it's for Scythia. So I could hardly speak, but there's yellow flowers in, in England called for Scythia. Mm-hmm. Clearly, my mum had said, here are some yellow flowers. They're called for Scythia. And I had remembered, she had pointed that out to me when I was a tiny child. And I remembered the name. Uh, and so uh, I know that my mum gave me this awareness of nature very young. And I'm really thankful for that. And also we very often we think that children are too little to understand or yeah, just too little. And it is not like that. They will remember things that we will teach them and explaining God on in nature is so simply for children to understand. Yeah. It's so much better than showing the Bible, I think. Yeah, I think I think that's something they can relate to as a child because yeah. they use all of their senses, it's around them, it's it's full of wonder. There are so many creative ways we can do it by, you know, making rubbings of the tree bark or prints with the leaves or um, looking for footprints and um, just all sorts of things we can do in nature. Looking at spider webs, turning over rotten wood and seeing all the, the ugly little creatures like run away. <laughs> yeah. And see that things live there. And it's just it's just amazing for them to watch worms and caterpillars. And butterflies. Okay. Well, then I will ask you, do you have any other tools or methods that you can recommend us to help children learn to play, uh, to pray? <laughs> um let me see i think as they as they grow older um i think those that try and find out what is it that they like what what Mm -hmm. do they enjoy what's their method of communication 
And so for those that like to write, you know, they can uh, write something to God. And as well, they can write a journal or they could write thank you card to God and make a thank you card or they could um, write a, an apology letter to God, you know. And so I think those things can be yeah. helpful. I think the more different ways we give them to communicate with God, the better. Mm -hmm. And they can find their way uh, because we actually communicate with humans in, like, I don't know, many different ways, right? It's okay to communicate with God. We can communicate with God in actually even more ways than we mm -hmm. can humans and not just narrow it down to just talking and saying the right words in the right way um I think for some children you know they like to like doing the Lord's Prayer with actions every time I do that I am my whole body feels inspired um and to to like thank God for every part of their body thank you God for my hands they can do this and this and this and thank you God for my eyes they can see these things um so some children need that tangibility um then there's things like forgiveness. I use a lot of different things where things disappear to help them understand about forgiveness because I think it's so important that they understand they're already forgiven, right? We're forgiven even before we ask for it. Yeah. And God's more than happy to, to forgive us. And we yeah. need to help them understand that. Um, and the blowing of bubbles and they disappear or writing something in salt in a pan and then shaking it. Um, doing things, you know, like squirting something into water and then stirring it and it just disappears. I have these amazing pens you use that you sew with and you make a mark on the fabric so you know where to sew the button and then you pop, pop it in water and the color just disappears. And it was so amazing. I did that at a creative prayer workshop one day and an 80 year old lady did this and she started to cry. <gasps> oh, you know, um, can, I, can I help you? Do you want to talk about something? And she said, I did something 40 years ago. She said, I've been asking God for forgiveness for it ever since. I know in my head he has forgiven me, but I didn't know in my heart until I saw this disappear in the water. <laughs> wow. You know, and, and we all need different things. So some children need to see this physical thing happen. That's okay. I mean, the whole tabernacle service, the, the festivals were all mm -hmm. about helping people to, to pray and worship God and relate to him um by doing things you know in, in the rituals and the festivals um so I think um just providing all different sorts of possibilities for prayer mm -hmm. um and that's why I think using creative prayers can be helpful for children who get stuck or even adults who get stuck um because we often pray the same prayers over and over again that's true he pray for the same characteristics of God that he provides, he forgives, he creates, he loves, you know. And then when you go through the alphabet and you praise God for his character, like with all the different letters, and you write down, I've done with children, write down 200 characteristics of God. Well, let's pray about some of those. The God who smiles over you, the God who sings over you, you know, and uh, um, just so many things. Um, so just explore and pray as you gather these different characteristics of God. Let's let's pray about this. You know, let's let's think about the God who sings over you to make him happy. <laughs> yeah. So can we say that um, our mistake as a parent is that our prayer life is boring? Is it our biggest mistake? <laughs> well, who knows? I mean, if your prayer life is boring, that's something you need to attend to, I guess, um, because you know. If you love someone, you try not to have boring conversations with them, <laughs> you know, and but they're less boring if you talk about what's happening in the moment. What happened today? What do I want to thank you for today? And um, what made me happiest today? Thank you for that. This is what I struggled with today. And I know you care about that. And I just want to let you know I'm struggling with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think as I've grown, I've more realized that, you know, when I was younger, I probably pray for specific things I want this kind of prayer and as I've grown older and wiser it's like God we care about this situation we know you care about it we're putting it in your hands because you are wiser than us to know what the good what the good outcome would be in the long term and so we're trusting you with this thing that we're worried about knowing that you will do your best with it in your time and not ours mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of the progression through prayers from I want another Lego set to actually, how do we pray 
for that. Maybe eventually you might say, I wonder what other child might be praying for a Lego set who has nothing. And I wonder whether we can find a way that you save up for your Lego and one to share with someone else. When you save up to buy your Lego, perhaps we'll answer someone else's prayer. I'll buy another set the same and we'll find a child who needs it. So kind of thinking about how we can develop their character through and their generosity, not just I want this, but mm -hmm. how other people want those things, how could we do that for others? Um, and it's a natural thing when you're a child because you pray for the thing that's most immediate in your head and if you want Lego, you want Lego. <laughs> and God knows that. And he's happy about that. He made children to play and to enjoy things and to explore and to want things. Um, and that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, but sometimes the Lego doesn't come. <laughs> and that's another big question. Very often Lego doesn't come or, yeah, because the, we have three answers, like yes, no, later, and, or you should wait. And this is really hard for children to understand that answer no doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. It is just, it's not good for you at this moment of your life. Yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, and maybe to find a gentle way to say the no. You know, I wonder what else God is doing. I wonder what else God is giving us that we're not noticing. Let's wonder about that. Um, when we say no, it always, like... Um, it adds a sort of adrenaline stress to the child's brain so the more that we can like um, say positive things about what God is doing um, and not so that they have a beautiful picture of his love and that love um, love doesn't always mean you get everything you want you can tell him he hears he understands he cares he knows you want this very much mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and he loves you um, and, but in life, we don't always get everything we want, and, and it doesn't mean we're not loved. So it's it's thinking, how what is the best and warmest way to, to let children understand that not all of their prayers are answered the way that they want, uh, but God hears them, and God loves them. Um, and like with parents, we hear them, we love them very much, but we, um, we know the best for them, their long-term outcome, we know there's other things involved, and we want the best for them. Um, and it's hard when they don't get what they want and that can be a difficult thing to deal with, but that is how at some point they need to realize their prayers are not about getting what they want. They can be about telling God what you want. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be about getting exactly what you want the way you thought. Yeah. Um, and you know, helping them to be content with what they have, to thank God for what they do have. Let's thank God for every one of your pieces of Lego. As you put it away today, thank you, God, for this piece of Lego. Thank you, God, for this. Or something that helps them to see that they have already a lot um, and how can they share. Um, and so, so letting them know it's okay to tell God what they want and, um, and, and finding ways not to say no if we can, you know, let's see what God is going to do here. Let's look um, and wonder when the answer doesn't come that we want, what else is God doing? So you're not exactly saying no, you're saying God is doing something different and, and God is doing it in his time. Mm -hmm. God will make everything beautiful in his time. But everything that we talked to him about, he loves us, he hears us, and he's working out all sorts of things to be the best for us. Um, and that's sometimes really complicated and like you could be praying for snow and another person is praying for sunshine and it's very difficult for God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but he loves everyone, you know, and sometimes it snows on everyone and sometimes it's sunny on everyone. Um, and sometimes God has to manage the fact that his children all have different wants and he has to work that out. And that's, that's God's job because that's really difficult. <laughs> And there's also something really helpful to have a glass of a jar with um, stones, little stones that we collect when we uh, say that our prayer was answered. So when we share the answered prayer, we can add the stone there. And then when we try to explain to a child, we can say, oh, look, God knows that what you want. He fulfilled those things because he knew that they were important and 
I don't know why, but those were something that you needed and he made it. So we will see what will happen with this one. It just maybe not the proper time. Um, yeah, so I am recommending a glass, a, a jar with uh, with little balls, for example, um, to show the answered prayer, to make this visual, to help them understand. Yes, and to ask how did God answer our prayers today? Not just ask them, not just pray them at the beginning of the day, uh, but say, how did he answer our prayers today? Let's look and see. Mm -hmm. Because he protected daddy on the roads. He gave us meals today. He did this for us. And bringing attention to all the things that he answered. Because we often just forget that is. We just move on. Thank you. Oh, I'm still alive. That's great. <laughs> you know, that is a wonderful thing. Um, but to see what he is answering as we're, as we're going along. We had a, a branch of um, a tree, tree branch. We put it in a pot and we tied all the names of people who needed healing that we were praying for in leaves on this tree branch. And then what happened was that um, we would pray for them um, or pray for the whole tree and all the leaves on it. And we said, these are people that we know are really sick. And we put them in your hands knowing that, um, you know, they all need different things. And then when the person was healed, we'd put a little pink flower onto the leaf. And if they died, we put a white flower. And it was sort of saying, this is, um, God is making things beautiful in his time. So we put a white flower on there. This person sadly died. And we know that God is working things out. There'll be a day when they'll be completely healed. Mm -hmm. How they're, you know, in the, they're resting or whatever's appropriate. Because sometimes if you say they're asleep or resting, children are afraid to go to sleep or rest in case they die. Yeah. So we understand what that means to them too. Um, but that way, you're acknowledging that God answers prayers in different ways. Um, and this and, is okay. <laughs> yeah, this is okay. And so by some of those little simple things that you do, like visually, it helps them to see, oh, yeah, God does answer prayers in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, people for different reasons. And he can't keep us all alive forever. Like, the world would be chaotic. You just, you know. <laughs> That's true. Okay, then I will give you last question. What I last question that I have written down. Maybe there will be some more, but my last question would be: Are there any appropriate, appropriate or not appropriate behaviors during the prayer? Because what we see very often is children lying down or doing something like that, or looking around, or just anything uh, should we do something with it or when <laughs> the interesting thing is we often feel that children should pray by shutting their eyes putting their hands together kneeling down there's nothing in the bible that says that <laughs> so shutting your eyes putting your hands together and kneeling down was what i was told anyway the victorian's way of <laughs> containing children during prayer <laughs> okay <laughs> putting their hands together and shutting their eyes there was less that could go wrong <laughs> um, so you know we need to be aware that in the bible people pray like standing up maybe lying down sitting down kneeling um you know they're they're you know they're stripping their clothes they're doing all sorts of things when they pray and being aware that there are many different sorts of ways to pray so you can encourage, you know, in your every family will have a different culture for prayer. You can encourage a certain response in prayer. Um, they don't have to kneel. They don't have to have their eyes shut even. Um, they don't even have to put their hands together, really. Um, if you're talking to God as a friend, if you have those moment prayers where you just stop and talk, you'll have your eyes open. You'll be just standing up. You'll maybe holding on to a child and something else at the same time. Um, and that's okay. So I... Um, so we can say, I wonder what way you like to be that when you pray, you can think think best about God. They can be mm -hmm. lying in their bed. They can be, they can be kneeling. Um, but say, what's the best way for you to talk to God as a friend? Let's think about that. And let's think about what it means if you pray this way or this way. You know, what does that mean for you? Ask them. When you're in church, it's a little more tricky because people will look at how your child is praying and like, oh, oh my goodness, their child is doing this in the prayers. Um, and I used to I used to pray the prayers wouldn't be too long, you know, because trying yeah. to put a child through a 10 minute prayer, I struggle. 
Um, and even Ellen White says, you know, it becomes tedious when these things go on for too long and everyone gets bored. And she thought that as well. So um, she's only human, like the rest of us. And one thing I did, I had a very lively child. And so when it was time to pray in church, I would get him to snuggle up to me. He liked to be cuddled. So I get him to snuggle in. I put my arm around him saying, let's have a hug during the prayer because God loves you. And, and he would just settle into a, like a warm hug during the prayer. And that would contain him. I didn't feel I had to kneel, put my hands together and do the, you know, look in a certain way. I just held him because for that age, the most important message I want to give him is God loves you. God loves you the way you are. And he made you wiggly. Um, mm -hmm. I love you. And I'm just going to hold you because I know that when I hold you, you wiggle a bit less. Um, so uh, I think it's, being aware, what are we communicating when we're saying this way or not that way? I think if a child is communicating that they're not interested in the prayer, they're lying on the ground, they're kicking their feet, they're playing with their toy, they're pinching their big sister, whatever they're doing, um, is to stop and think what's happening here. Why is this child not engaged, not focused? And usually it's, we need to think about praying in a different way where they're using their hands. That's why the action prayers, they're using something physical, seeing what they're doing, writing something down kind of prayer, which focuses their attention in their way um, can really help because then they're focused, they're engaged, they're, they're mm -hmm. in the conversation. Um, and also, you know, we need to know that if we have conversations at an adult level with adults and we talk for a long time and our children are going to, wander away and not listen anymore and pick up some toys and play and um, that's okay mm -hmm. so I think thinking about the kind of prayers we have with children how long they are can they understand them are they short sentences with words they understand and are they short prayers if they know the prayer will be short and they could understand it and, and maybe you're going to do something interesting because they need something visual or kinesthetic then they can tolerate longer and longer prayers as they grow older. Um, yeah, but if we're finding it hard to tolerate a long prayer, we need to think, what's it like for them? Yeah. Well, then I will also, I would like to add that a very important is example of parent, uh, praying parent. Uh, and I remember my father, as I was a child, I was really amazed because I was thinking, wow, this this important manager this this uh, this guy who goes in front of the whole church and preach and he kneels he starts his day from kneeling in a suit i remember him always every day in the morning reading bible and then pray by himself at his room dressed already to work and i remember this picture him kneeling and praying in a suit I re it was really amazed because for me what is written in my head and in my heart is that he's so important but still God is more important than the work than the suit mm -hmm. uh, elegant suit than the food than we are just the prayer and the connection with God is like the primary thing and this is something that stayed with me even when I, when I think I was not teached how to pray or something this picture stayed the whole life with me so our example our example is really important and I do think they need to see us hear us pray the prayers that they can understand yeah we make the prayers we pray quietly to God you know that we don't speak aloud in front of them for various reasons um, but to choose prayers that we can speak aloud, they can hear us. Just simple, warm-hearted prayers um, that speaking to our loving Father, when we see God as an all-loving Father, the way we speak to him, the way we respond to him, the way we connect our children with him and teach them to pray is so much more warm and beautiful and natural than, you know, if we feel we ought to pray, we should pray, we should use these holy long words and um, then I think and we can alienate them. Mm -hmm. um, another lovely thing that my, my husband remembers is that whenever it was his birthday, his mother would come when she put him to bed and pray, put a hand on his head and pray a blessing on him. And sometimes it's just the one from Deuteronomy, you know, may they shine upon you. 
Uh, but there's lots of other blessings in the Bible. And we would often try to bless our children, just put our hands on them and then just give them a blessing. And last night I was putting my granddaughter to bed and I put my hand on her shoulder and gave her a blessing. And she goes to sleep with this blessing in her heart. And that's a lovely way to end the day, feeling connected with God, feeling um, grateful to God, feeling beloved by God, and not feeling I've been too naughty for God to love today, you know, whatever, just... I am loved. I can sleep in peace because God is awake and he loves me. And that's such a wonderful way to, to close the day and to wake up. Um, also in the morning, when, when you wake up your child, you know, give them a blessing from God. I'm so glad you're my child. I'm so glad you're awake. I'm so grateful to God that I have you and I have this day. Mm -hmm. um, they, they wake with that in their heart also. I would like to finish with a text. Um, I'm always thinking which text would would be appropriate for for giving a, a little bit of hope for parents' heart. And um, as I was reading, I I went through New Testament, uh, trying to find a truth for mother in texts. So it gave me so many great new thoughts for for being a mom and ways to to handle situations that i am really amazed and one of the texts that i would like to uh, read today as a summarize is written in matthew 5 44 but i tell you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you i when i read this i was i start to laugh because so many times I, I parents see the children as enemies because they are fighting for so many things and there are so many tough situations. And when I read this, remember, pray for your enemies. I was like, okay, even in those moments, our main job is to be really focused on God and pray even for those little ones that we see sometimes as enemies but they are loved by god and this is we are the, his children and they are his children as well so we have to remember this that's beautiful yes yes that's so thank good. you for and karen for today and uh, till next subject so next week we will cover subject connected with children's emotions so Till next week. Bye. Bye.